There we go. I think we're recording. Perfect. All right. So, hey, everybody, and we're welcomed by our special guest, Spencer Love, here on Ring Respect Radio. And look at this. Figured out technology. Well, I'm on the Zoom here today. How are you doing, Spencer? <laughs> I'm good. Like I said, it's... Uh... It's nice that the snafu fixed itself. I've had far too many concerns or far too many issues with Zoom through uh, this entire situation, you know, this COVID thing that you may not have, may or may not have heard of at this point. It's a very little known thing going on. Um, So I'm glad that it wasn't an issue that you and I had to reschedule and you and Papa Smokes and I had to reschedule on because man, I'm excited to be here. I love listening to you guys. I'm so excited to like actually chat with you guys face-to-face or phone-to-phone because after listening for so long, it's one of those things I feel like you get to know people, but you never really know people until you sit down. So it's great to chat, guys. Thanks for having me on today. Oh, thanks for being on. This is a great honor. Uh, We haven't done a whole lot of having people on our show before and stuff like that. So this is new to us. We're loving it. And uh, yeah, we got Papa Smokes on the phone for everybody uh, tuning in, watching this right now. So you uh, don't get to see his lovely face, but you get to hear his voice in the background. (laughs) That So Thanks for joining the conversation, Papa Smokes. Yeah, I'm even further behind in technology than you guys are, so uh, you don't get the face this time. (laughs) Well, don't worry. I've uh, I've been told often I have a face for radio, so I think in some cases this uh, this may not be to the benefit of the viewers that my face is on it as nicely as I can put it towards myself. Uh, so this is going to be a lot of fun. So, uh, yeah. So anyway, Love Wrestling, Spencer. The Love Wrestling is your show on YouTube. Anybody should go over, check it out, subscribe, definitely, and give you some love over there. Uh, tell us a little bit first before we get into Love Wrestling, though. How did your journey in professional wrestling start? I want to know how you got involved with professional wrestling and to the point where we're at today. Yeah, like it's uh, it's a long-winded story, admittedly, so it depends on if you want to cut me off at any point or not, but feel free to if you feel the need. Um, I kind of have like a, a sort of non-traditional journey as far as professional wrestling goes, I suppose. Uh, most people I talk to or most people, whether they're inside the industry or they're just professional wrestling fans, a lot seem to have the typical story of, yeah, I was a fan for my entire life. The first memory I have is Monday Night Raw or whatever there. And um, for me, I wasn't really like a wrestling fan growing up by any means. It just never seemed to be the show that was on television. My mom and dad never grew up fans. And uh, I never really found it sort of popping up on TV in any circumstances when I was a kid, outside of the fact that for Tuesdays and Thursdays, I would go to my grandma and grandpa's for lunch. And they would just be playing the highlights on Sportsnet here in Edmonton. So I wouldn't get the full Monday Night Raw. I wouldn't get all of SmackDown, but I'd get the highlights. The first memory that I've got in pro wrestling is the big show and Brock Lesnar breaking the ring. But quite literally, guys, like I, I wasn't a huge pro wrestling fan um, up until I turned 18, 19. And I remember that the first independent professional wrestling show that I went out to was the PWA 11th anniversary show here in Edmonton. They were still running out of the Century Casino at the time. And like, I feel like you can make a lot of the same comparisons to the independent scene now in Canada and that you go through the card and it was quite literally like a who's who of professional wrestling, whether you're talking independence or whether you're talking like the major leagues to use my air quotes, like Taya Valkyrie's on the card, Peyton Royce is on the card, Casey Spinelli's on the card, Michael Richard Blaze, Brandon Van Danielson, Ravenous Randy Myers, like again, just it, there's no better way to put it than a who's who. So that was really my first introduction to pro wrestling. I didn't even really start to get into like, um, again, using the air quotes, like the major leagues up until the first pay-per-view I remember watching was Clash of Champions, I believe it was, or Night of Champions. I can't remember when they made the switch. Um, when Seth Rollins was wrestling Brock Lesnar, The Undertaker came back and interrupted the match heading into their SummerSlam match. Again, like, I'm sure you can relate to a ton like professional wrestling fans tend to do. My years are a bit fuzzy, but I can very clearly remember the moment. And from there, like, honestly, that was sort of when I had the come to Jesus moment of, okay, this is the SHIT I love. I have to watch Raw. I have to watch SmackDown. Never heard of NXT or Impact or whatever it may be at this point, but I'm watching all of it. Like I dove in with both feet right into the deep end and, uh, at least as far as a fan goes, I, I, 
I just love pro wrestling. I can't find a better way, and I've got to find a less cliche way to put it. As a guy who's got a last name of love and runs love wrestling, I feel like people are... If you were to do a drinking game of how many times I say the word love in a podcast, I am certain we would run into some legal issues. So do not do that. But uh, I just quite literally, as a pro wrestling fan, there there is very little that, that I don't love. Of course, there are storylines. There are... Um, for sure, various instances and circumstances that cannot be talked about positively. But um, for me, whether you're looking at character work, music, storylines, whatever it may be, again, um, I just love to show my love of professional wrestling, whether it be as a fan or luckily enough over the last few years as a uh, podcaster and personality, I suppose you would say. Definitely. Yeah. So, uh, you know, talking about the drinking game, I know you got Papa Smoke's attention there. I think that might be a good idea coming up. I have a fun night drinking to uh, the mention of love on the show. And I'm certain I would play. I just figured for legal reasons, it's your podcast. So I may as well cover the uh, the legal caveats before we get into that end of things. Well, I have broken all legal things on this show. It's all good. Uh, but how about your involvement in, in, in the independent scene in Alberta and stuff like that? Uh, you mentioned going to the shows, but I think you've had uh, some involvement in the background. Uh, where did that come about? How did you get involved there? Um, so Force Pro Wrestling is is really the only promotion I've done any official work for. Um, and, and I can't thank Ivan slash Tex Games enough for that. Getting involved on that side of things, whether it be the stuff I did with Backstage or uh, I was lucky enough to hop on commentary for their final show up to this point. Um, but not final show, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Um, it's just such a cool experience. And it was never something, again, when I got into podcasting or writing or uh, sort of took baby steps into the content creation side of things, I guess, it was never something that um, I ever thought I wanted to do or ever even thought was a possibility. You know, I got into pro wrestling and my coverage in a very um, unofficial sense of things. I know that there are still people out there who... Um, you know, rightfully or not, think I'm shitty at what I do because I'm unofficial in what I do. But opinions are opinions. Um, I've never outside of Force Pro done anything like official. And quite frankly, it's it's been kind of nice to have, um, you know, not a perfect mix. There's no such thing as perfection, but I think a very good mix of both um, official and unofficial experience, if you know what I mean. Sure. It's really nice for me to be able to do the stuff with Force Pro Wrestling, and I absolutely love the ability to uh, get in on the commentary and stuff I never again would have thought I'd have the chance to do, but um, getting to still have sort of the, the um, fan experience is still so fun for me. It's still so cool to get to see announcements from uh, any of the various promotions out here in Alberta, like Real Canadian Wrestling announcing Josh Alexander. Uh, I would just have to assume here, but I feel like if, if at the professional level, Dave Meltzer has to at least have an idea of what's going on or Sean Ross Sapp has to have an idea of what's going on. And in some way, I feel like that takes away from the fan experience. Whereas for me, I have no idea that RCW is announcing that Josh Alexander's coming back, especially when he's wrestling heavy metal again. I have no idea. So when I'm scrolling through Facebook again, I've got the proverbial mark out moment, right? So um, it's been very cool to have the opportunity to do some uh, official stuff. It really has been because um, I like to think I, I, I like to think I can talk and I also like to think I can ramble to both the, uh, detriment and benefit of what I do but it was kind of cool to have that I guess put to the test in a number of ways that um, are really out of my wheelhouse and I say that in the most positive ways I loved doing them but backstage interviews and playing a character is so different than doing an interview I know that's something you guys can relate to so um, getting to do it cool as hell and I can't wait to do the opportunity again yeah, there's a lot of a lot of things involved and stuff like that, and uh, love love your involvement so far too. And there's uh, thank uh, you. Hopefully, a lot of great things coming up. Uh, before we go any further, Pop Smokes, anything that uh, you want to ask her right now? Oh. There is. A, I was interested, Spencer, in when you were talking about uh, when you first got into wrestling, you weren't watching a lot on TV, but the love really came up when you started going to live shows. And in a year where we haven't had live shows for the past. Uh, past number of months or past year how important are, are the live shows to you as a wrestling fan and and to the uh the betterment of pro wrestling as a whole 
Man, I, number one, I think that no matter which way you cut it, um, the live experience is so important. And I, I do want to stress that like WWE and Impact and all of the promotions really that have been running with no fans, um, I think all of them have done a great job. You know, some have done better jobs than others, whether it be on the testing side, whether it be on the story side. And I know that there's a wide variety of opinions there that I'm not going to touch. But as far as it goes for what you can do, given the circumstances, like even when it came to WrestleMania 36 last year, even when it came to the performance center shows that I know were really rough and grimy and greasy and were definitely um, in the nicest way possible to them, like a very first attempt at running wrestling with no fans. Um, I, I think that every every promotion should be commended for the work they've been able to do. But I think like a lot of wrestlers, a lot of promoters, anyone involved in professional wrestling would say that live experience is so important. And I think for me, especially when you get to the independent level, um, luckily enough, you know, WWE and all elite and, and again, the major leagues, I always use my air quotes because when you say major leagues, it almost sounds like it's, it's taking away from the work people do at independent. So I always want to make sure the work is recognized as equally as possible. Everybody's taking a beating for us. Um, but when you look at the independent level, these are individuals who, whether they're individuals who are in it because they love wrestling, not expecting, um, a hot dog and a handshake. I hate the cliche, but people who are quite literally just coming out because they love to wrestle. Or if you're somebody who, whether you're paying a phone bill, an electric bill, all of your bills, whatever it may be through independent wrestling, those are the people I really feel for because fans coming in, paying their tickets, the actual live event is what sort of butters their bread, right? So um, even outside of my experience as a fan, I am aching to get out to shows. I was lucky enough to get to a couple that RCW did out here in Edmonton. Uh, when they were running, I unfortunately couldn't get out to CWE because my shows, or excuse me, shows, my uh, my shoot job was running at the same time. Monster Pro did some great shows in the interim, and I was lucky enough to get to their outdoor stuff. Like, I'm aching not more than anybody, but certainly as much as anybody to get back out to live shows. I think quite literally they are as as fundamental as it gets at the independent level. I think once you get involved with um, TV contracts or streaming deals or stuff like that, not to say that not having a live crowd isn't a detriment, but I also do think that at the very least, a lot of those people provided they're willing to and provided they're able to travel have been able to do, you know, what they loved and what pays their bills throughout this pandemic in some way, shape and form. So um I, I think I think it's brutal either way. You know, I, I can't cut it either way. I'm trying to make a lot of justifications, hence my stuttering. But um, at the very least, there are a lot of people who have been able to continue doing this despite no fans. As far as it goes for presentation, though, that's an entirely different story. Fans are fundamental. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, no, I was going to say I couldn't agree more. I mean, we know we've been itching for a return to live action. Uh, Saskatchewan's been grounded ever since the mm -hmm. start of this whole thing. Uh, we just had got rolling with PPW and basically put to a halt. And I mean, Bob Smokes and I trying to do this uh, remote uh, podcast and everything like that and making the most of a bad situation, praying that something good's going to come out of this year and we can get back to the live action. And you know what? If Alberta gets there first, uh, Papa Smokes and I, I think we might have to make a road trip out to Alberta. <laughs> well, I've got a double bed pullout couch. So as long as it's only the two of you guys coming up, we've got room. If there are any more, we've got room, but somebody's fighting for that couch. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel like fighting, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I agree. Like, And especially in Saskatchewan's case, like you guys said, like... Alberta's been very lucky that whether you agree with how the restrictions have gone or not, um, we were lucky enough that we were able to get a few shows for a few months of the year. And especially on RCW's end, you know, um, full credit to them. I think that being able to provide the opportunity for wrestlers, not only to wrestle, but wrestle back to back on weekly shows is absolutely huge. You know, I think that the proverbial, and I've never wrestled. So a lot of the cliches I'm about to spout off, I just, and, and am not just, but am uh, just a mark, but like, you know, getting your reps in and putting in that sort of work and getting the experience in front of a live crowd, especially when, you know, I'm sure you can speak to it in Saskatchewan as well. When you've got a fan base that, that, 
just gives a shit. When you really give a shit about the professional wrestling and the people behind it, um, that's the best experience you can get. You know, unfortunately, in, in not Alberta, but I've had the chance to go out to indie shows in the states and stuff like that. And and maybe they're not in as front of maybe they're not in as much of a passionate fan base. And uh, it's just tough, you know how how you can feel invested in what you're doing at that point. And it's no discredit to the promoters or the wrestlers, but if you're wrestling in front of few people, it's hard to get motivated. When you're wrestling in Alberta and Saskatchewan and BC and a, a large part of Canada, from my experience, you're wrestling in front of people who care, and you're going to wrestle in front of a pretty full house a lot of the time. And getting the experience to do that as often as you get with real Canadian wrestling, I think is absolutely fantastic. And uh, when you look at Saskatchewan, it's just unfortunate that a lot of those professional wrestlers out there didn't get the opportunity to wrestle as much, man. Like Michael Allen, Richard Clark, by my money, like he should be one of those guys in the conversation, not just uh, as far as top independent professional wrestlers, but when you're reading like those sports key to dream lists of top 10 wrestlers that WWE or AEW or dream promotion of choice, I guess, is talking about should sign. Uh, he, by my money, is one of the best wrestlers out there. Sean Moore, Davey O'Doyle, same sort of thing, right? Like, um, it's unfortunate that those guys haven't had the chances that a lot of people in not only Alberta, but the States have had because um, a lot of promotions and a lot of wrestlers have taken the opportunity, not that they haven't, um, but to step up their streaming. And when you're streaming great professional wrestling live, when people are aching for it, um, no fault of anybody's, but that's just... It's unfortunate that a lot of Canada hasn't had the chance to do that. Yeah, very, very grounded so far, and it's been unfortunate for many of the wrestlers. Uh, anything to add, Papa Smokes? Yeah, I was just going to also add that the fans out here in Saskatchewan are, are just dying of thirst, too, because uh, we, we only have the one company in this whole province now, which is PPW in Saskatoon, and uh, we have fans that drive hours to come and see the, our, our monthly shows and everything, and it just speaks to the passion you were talking about, Spencer. And they really, really love the product. They really love wrestling, and including the, the live shows, which, which is a different experience than watching on TV and a much uh, more intense experience. So, yeah, we can definitely speak to that, too. Our, our wrestlers are, are suffering and our fans are suffering terribly, and we're just, we're just hoping we can run in some form this summer, maybe in the outdoor or the uh, public, uh, or the spaced-out uh, uh, venue of some kind, and uh, just we want to give our fans what they're dying for. Yeah, it's going to be great when we can get to that point. Uh, we're looking forward to it. I know you are too. But in the meantime, you know, the three of us have been able to make the most of a bad situation with our podcasts, our uh, videos that we've been creating and stuff like that. And speaking of which, new show, Love Wrestling. And I love it. I've uh, watched quite a few of these interviews. You've done a great job and uh, really enjoyed watching a couple in particular, like uh, Mike Bennett was a great one. I know Papa Smokes and I talked about his match with Nick Aldis. Uh, that he recently had oh, with the man. NWA. Fantastic matchup. Yeah. It <laughs> so was good. Yeah. So and, good. And uh, and I really appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. And then uh, you also had Chelsea Green on the show. I know you've known her for quite a while, long time. That was a you know big one to really get, considering her current position and stuff like that, working with the WWE. Um, mm -hmm. How did Love Wrestling come about? What uh, gave you the idea? And uh, what motivated you to go about this path? You know, um, I know you guys are both a little bit familiar with the WCSN and what I was doing there, but for anybody who wasn't, I'll give as brief as I can without boring you guys. Um, the WCSN was a site that I had previously run with a few people out here in Alberta that um, strictly focused on Western Canadian professional wrestling, which for me personally, I think that uh, the work that I do with Love Wrestling, at least on my personal end, um, I still try and highlight as much as possible. You know, I still think that I, I said it enough when we previously were talking about your last question there, but um, there's just so much talent out here and so much great talent. You know, I'm not just blowing smoke when I say that. Uh, and I'm not just making a pun on Papa Smoke's name by saying that, <laughs> but I think that there's just so much great talent out here. And, and, you know, I do think uh, I'll give the asterisk here that there could be a lot more done both promotion wise and professional wrestler wise to promote themselves. But I also think that there has been a lot of that done and a lot of that work put in and um, the juice to this point hasn't quite 
gotten what the squeeze has put in. You know what I mean? Um, you look at an MRB, you look at a Sean Moore, a guy I talked about earlier, Artemis Spencer, and these are guys who I think are definitely recognized, but like, man, it might just be my personal opinion and I might be punching above my weight class here. But again, um, when you're talking about guys like that, Michael Allen, and Richard Clark, like, um, they're some of the best pro wrestlers in the world at this level. Right. And some of the best pro wrestlers, even when you're comparing again to some of those proverbial major leagues and, um, I, I do think that there is a lot more room for promoting individuals like that, not just because they're great professional wrestlers, but because they're great people, at least in my experience. So that was where really the WCSN sort of um, planted its flag, I guess, and really tried to promote the Western Canadian scene. We really tried to take like a, um, I mean this in the best way, not as a slag, but like sort of a dirt sheet approach to um, covering pro wrestling. I use the asterisks there because we never like would try and break anything before a promotion broke it or anything like that. We just simply wanted to report on literally everything going on in Western Canada. And that's where um, in the best possible way, sort of the downfall started is when uh, myself and Mike Maloney, who I know you guys know really well and Kyle and a very, very talented, but a very limited group of people are, trying to put out content on everything in Western Canada. Like Mike's putting out videos four or five or six times a day. I'm writing 10 to 12 articles a day. Kyle's like sending me podcasts months in advance because he's stressed because he's trying to do so many. And, and those are all again said in very positive ways, but uh, when they're not paying the bills, it's a lot of hard work. Again, I'll, I'll use the juice for no squeeze metaphor, right? Like um, it just became taxing. And I know I, only speak for myself on this but when it's starting to cut into work and time with my family and time with my brand new puppy and all of that sort of stuff it's just time to take a step back right like so um admittedly i made a very quick decision i sort of sat at my computer one day and i said this is uh this is it and backed out of that because i just it was time you know um, the more I look back on it, it was just, I was burnt out. I was doing too much. I know a lot of other people were doing too much and, uh, it was time to take a step back and reevaluate. So shut down the site, sort of took a couple of days and started to really focus on, okay, what do I love about professional wrestling? And quite literally there is again, sort of the cliche, but the snap point for it is, well, shit, like I don't want to write 15 articles about, not stuff that I don't love, but stuff that, again, is is maybe not getting the views I want, or maybe I'm waking up at 4.30 in the morning to write about these guys or whatever it may be. I'm going to wake up at 9, I'm going to have my coffee on a weekend, and I'm going to write about Drew McIntyre claymoring the shit out of people every week, right? Let's cover what I love about professional wrestling and hopefully provide a platform for other people to cover what they love in professional wrestling. Um started to approach a number of people like Zach Ralph and Josh Robinson and the gentleman from Turnbuckle Rewind and uh, everybody, everybody else. I say this on every podcast. I feel like if I start listing names, I have to name everybody. So trust me, I will on this podcast at some point. <laughs> but I just started approaching people that um, truly were people I, I just wanted to work with, for lack of a better way to put it. It wasn't let's poach people. It wasn't let's build the you know, super friends of professional wrestling. Luckily enough, that's just what it's turned out to be, whether it's, um, you know, approaching Zach quite literally saying, Hey, I just want to work with you and have no idea how to and building out Thursday night quiz plex and testing people's trivia on pro wrestling or approaching Josh, because I think he might be one of the best content creators out there in pro wrestling um, and just content notwithstanding, but just approaching it again, saying, let's, let's work on what you love in professional wrestling. And I want to provide you a platform to do it. Um, had a lot of those conversations. And on January 1st, we, uh, we launched. And let me tell you guys, like, it's, it's, it's one of those things. I feel like the comparison I always make is that, um, you know, with a lot of matches, when I was recapping, I used to just like type out essays and essays about these matches. When I started to realize a couple of months ago that the best thing I can say about a pro wrestling match is 
Uh, just watch this match. There's no need for me to describe it. Just watch this match. And I feel like with everybody on the site and all of the content they put out, um, I am so, so um, blessed. I know it's such a cliche, blessed, lucky, my heart is warm, whatever else you want to throw on there, um, that I get to work with people who I just look at their content every time I get it in my inbox or every time I put it out and say, shit, I could either just post an essay about this or I could say, check this out because I think it's cool as shit. I'm so lucky to work with the people I do. I'm so lucky that they were all so willing and so excited to jump on on quite literally for most of them, a random Edmontonian hopping in their Twitter DM saying, hey, I think you're great. Do you want to do some cool shit? Because I am certain there are a lot of pro wrestlers and pro wrestling fans out there who have received thousands of those DMs. And the follow-up to it is, yeah, will you send me feet pics? And I'm just glad that all of them were like, you know what? This guy doesn't seem that weird. I'll at least respond. And we've gone from there. <laughs> what a great start. And, you know, you you mentioned about, uh, you know, this super group of wrestling people in the area and stuff you know in a sense we know where you're coming from um I, when i got my kind of start into things the one thing i did notice was companies don't want to play kind with other companies there was a lot of animosity even between companies within our own province and then uh, crossing over to alberta you know don't mention these guys that's the competition and i think it's such an old way of thinking in a sense and we like old ways of thinking sometimes papa smokes and i but not in this sense i think that there needs to be this, you know, partnership in, in a way, you know, being able to trade talent between companies and being able to do these interviews like we're doing here and just share the love of professional wrestling, not only in Canada, but Western Canada here and really be able to, you know, reach out and more so I think get over the wrestlers that are out here that deserve it kind of thing, because everybody in Western Canada is great. They get the psychology, they know how to get in there and give a good show each and every week. And I, I absolutely love doing this and I I've loved watching what you've done. And uh, yeah, Thank I you. guess uh, I got let Papa smokes cut in here at uh, Papa smokes. Anything to add? And I think we just lost Papa smokes on the call. So I'm going to bring him back. In here <laughs> That's no worries. Cause right. like you, you make a great point there in that like, um, you know, I know that as someone who's never worked in the business, brother, brother, that uh, it might not be my place, but I do think that there is a lot more room for uh, collaboration, not isolation. You know what I mean? I think that you've seen what people in Ontario can do with stuff like Backyard Pro and Go Hard Pro Wrestling and um, even in Edmonton, the Clandestine Society and what Michael Richard Blaze and everybody who got involved in that show was able to do um, even just on the online. You know, we talk about <clears throat> excuse me uh we talk about the need for more online stuff and the need for even people like us to adapt to the changing world of professional wrestling in the in the context of a pandemic but when you look at what people are doing online and you look at stuff like joey janela's cluster f word because i don't know for sure if i can curse yet no um, yeah, it's good <laughs> perfect the cluster fuck um when you look at stuff like that and you look at what the collective's doing and iwtv and um all of those sorts of individuals it's so odd for me that um it's not a market that's truly been exploited in in I'd say Canada as, Canada as a whole up until, you know, really go hard and, and Backyard Pros showed what you can do strictly online. And Clandestine did the same thing last year. We were just lucky enough to have fans in there in a, in a limited amount. So I can't give that strictly fat, fan attendance only or non-fan attendance only, excuse me, uh, to Clandestine. But you just see what people in Western Canada can do, what in what Canadians can do and, and – um, the attention people can draw internationally. I think one of the funniest analogies I've got for it, but one of the best analogies I can make for it, it was so funny for me at the end of clandestine society for uh, people to say that the stream was being torrented because it was popular enough and cool enough that people wanted to check it out. Um, and it's greasy. Don't get me wrong that you won't pay five 99 to backbreaker media to watch some great shit. But um the fact that people took the time out of their day to figure out, and it maybe it's just more impressive because I'm horrible with technology, but you took the time to figure out a way to stream this for free because you were that interested in Western Canada's premier professional wrestlers. 
I think it goes to show that there is the interest there. There is the desire for um, not just Albertans, not just Saskatchewanites, not just British Columbians, not just Canadians, but wrestling fans internationally and across the planet, for lack of a better way to put it, um, to check out what we've got to offer. And let me tell you guys, I think that as far as what we've got to offer, I would put our buffet up against pretty well any uh, proverbial territory out there. Amen to that for sure. Uh, Palm Smokes, you're back on the line now. Uh, any questions you want to run by, Spencer? Yeah, yeah. Well, sure. I, Spencer, I follow you on social media, and I've taken uh, interest in your bucket list of interviews. And I wanted to ask you how that's going. I, I've seen it's a list of 25 or 30 names that you uh, desire to interview, and uh, you've got quite a few of them crossed off and only a few left. Uh, how's the bucket list going? It's, um, and, and this is one of those sort of things where like the, the actual literal phrase unbelievable is all I can say about it is, is it's, it's, it's humbling. It really is humbling that a lot of the people who, um, I quite literally considered pipe dreams when I got into this, um, have taken their time for me and not only taken their time for me, but, um, in the cases of people like MRB and a Chelsea Green and a TJ Wilson and, um, great people like that. They've taken the time to, after I've interviewed them, it's, it's, it's the most crude way I can put it, but I unfortunately can't think of a better. It's not just like the, the F and Chuck, you know what I mean? It's not just let's do an interview and okay, it's the interview done. Like all of those people have been so giving with their time, their advice, their, um, just their energy. I don't, again, have a better way to put it. Those people have been so, so good to me. Um, I wrote my first bucket list. The first interview I ever released was March 3rd, 2018. And that was the third episode of Over the Top Rope that I ever did. Uh, that was a podcast that my brother Hayden Love and I started in, uh, yeah, January 2018. I think a Royal Rumble preview was our first episode or something about Brock Lesnar because he's rad. Um but the third episode we ever did was quite literally, I sent emails off to everybody on that bucket list that I could find contact info for and God bless them or whatever deity you believe in, bless them. MRB took the time to reply to me. He literally let me call him on his lunch break at work. And that was the first interview I ever did. That was March 3rd, 2018. The bucket list was written a few weeks before that. The first bucket list, I should say. Uh, and if I remember correctly, because I don't have it in front of me, I think I've got four names or five names left off of that original list that I've got to cross off off of about, I think 15 was each list because it looked nicely formatted when I printed the list and all that sort of stuff. So I think I got 15 names on every list. Luckily enough, I crossed off a good chunk of them off that first one. So yeah, about a month ago, I finally figured it was about time that... Uh, let's revise it a bit. So the second list, I have just started to cross off um unfortunately i should say haven't crossed off anybody on the second list yet but uh don't worry i'll tag them all in the twitter comments when this episode comes out because i you know and and i say this in in hopefully the least annoying way possible but um i've always figured if a professional wrestler takes the time and tells me i do not want to do an interview i'm unavailable whatever it may be man i'm happy to respect that nobody nobody at the independent level or at the big leagues owes me any of their time. But if your email address isn't giving me any kickbacks, I'm just going to justify in my mind that you haven't replied. So I have sent off emails to everybody on that second bucket list. So hopefully the next time I'm back, uh, we've got some good updates on that end. <laughs> Sounds good. All right. Any, any other questions there, Bob Smokes? I'm uh, not for a moment. Go for it, Bob. Okay. Uh, what's been your favorite uh, interview that you've done so far on love wrestling in particular. I'm glad you narrowed it down. I'm really glad you narrowed it down. But at the same time, I think that uh, my response is pretty similar in that um, they're all favorites for very different reasons. Uh, I think that Deanna Perrazzo is a personal favorite of mine because she was someone again, that I, I never thought I'd have the opportunity to chat with and, People went to bat for me to make that happen. She's someone who is one of the top pro wrestlers in the world, not just female pro wrestlers, but one of the top pro wrestlers in the world by my money. Again, I say this as, as positively towards myself as possible, but shit, they don't owe me any time. They don't owe me anything. So the fact that 
Um, people went out of their way to vouch for me on that. And Deanna took the time for me is, is nuts. Um, both Mike Bennett and gentleman Jervis, I think were very great conversations for very similar reasons. And that, um, and I think I can make this comment about a lot of my interviews that I've done, but, um, my priority or, or sort of my modus operandi with a lot of these hasn't just been, um, you know, let's do a Q and a, let's find out, you know, the hot scoops for lack of a better way to put it. Let's find out about the people behind the pro wrestlers and getting the opportunity to chat to Bennett and, and gentleman Jervis, who, two guys who, um, you know, great pro wrestlers. I don't think I need to say any more than they're great pro wrestlers, but um, on the mental health end, I think that both myself and a lot of other individuals can look up to as inspirations and influences. They were great conversations as far as that goes. Chelsea Green is is one of the best people I've ever had the opportunity to meet, pro wrestling or otherwise. I just like shooting the shit with her, so of course I'm going to put her over every chance I get. And like Casey Cattell, like when I sent out the interview email to her, I had only like ever watched her wrestle throughout the pandemic, never live, never anything like that. But as again, I'm sure you guys can speak to uh, when you've got a lot of time on your hands, you watch a lot of pro wrestling and you get into that YouTube spiral and to send her an email and just be like, Hey, I know so little about you outside of what I found out over the last few months, let's shoot the shit and to have such a cool conversation. And again, to have someone that I now am, am lucky to consider a friend uh, is just cool. So I, I, I don't want to exclude anyone, but those are at the very least a few that come to mind off the bat. Um, but again, just, just to stress it, and I know it's cliche, I know anybody that anybody ever talks to never wants to leave anyone out, but um, I'm incredibly lucky to have had the luck and uh, the privilege that I have had with a lot of my guests. And uh, follow-up question to that, one person, all of professional wrestling right now, you get that interview no questions asked. Who is it going to be? Who's the dream interview for Love Wrestling? Bret Hart. Bret Hart. And, and, Great answer. <laughs> well, and, and, and he's a Canadian icon. He's my personal greatest of all time. He's the Mount Rushmore. He's, um, I said it before, but I'll say it again a Canadian icon. There's no other way I can put it. Um, there are a lot of people I consider bucket list dream interviews, but, um, I, I honestly think at this point he would be the only guy that if I interviewed him and was hit by the proverbial bus the next day, okay, I've at least accomplished, and I use my air quotes for any of the audio listeners, I've at least accomplished everything I need to in pro wrestling because, damn it, I got to chat with Bret Hart. That's the hope. That's the dream. Uh, lots of people, if you're going to give me an extended list, though. <laughs> no, I mean, Bret Hart, what a great selection. I mean, I grew up watching Bret Hart. Uh, that was kind of the era I came from was that late 80s, early 90s. So I saw his rise, saw him win the championship the first time in Saskatoon. So, I mean, if you get that interview, I mean, applaud you now. I mean, you've had some great ones, but that would be ultimate for sure. Uh, Thank you. That, and, and <laughs> send any tweets out you can on that, end, man, because any way I can try and make that happen without annoying him. And I do stress that the guy's an icon. And if I bug him, shot is shot. You yeah. know what I mean? But... Let's do what we can. <laughs> no, but uh, if you can ever get that interview and if we can help you get that interview, I mean, by all means, we're going to keep sharing that name out there all we can. Uh, anything else uh, to add on your end, Pop Smokes? No, I'm good. This has been a very interesting conversation. I'm glad to get the chance to meet you. Uh, well, maybe I'll use my air quotations here. I'll meet you and, and have a conversation with you in this way. And, uh, I love the fact that uh, our promotions and our uh, love of wrestling is bringing us together from between the two provinces. And uh, it's been a thrill to have you on Ring Respect Radio. Thanks a lot for being on. Man, thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you very you. much. We we appreciate everything. Uh, we want everyone to re be reminded, go check out Love Wrestling on YouTube. Subscribe to the channel. Give thumbs up to Spencer. Show him some love because we got to get the word love in there a few more times for this drinky game to be possible next time. <laughs> and definitely, we got to do this again. This should be a more often thing. I get you on the show and uh, just be able to shoot the shit about pro wrestling. This has been a great time. Thank you very much for joining us on Ring Respect and uh, looking forward to having you again. Guys, thank you. I can't say it enough. I appreciate what you guys are doing. I appreciate what everybody at Backbreaker is doing. You guys are all doing great work for professional wrestling, so the thanks is quite genuinely all mine. Perfect. Thank you very much, Spencer. Have a great night. You too, friend. Bye-bye.